Today I'm going to be painting two different movie scenes from the movies Kiki's Delivery Service and Howl's Moving Castle. I use the website animationscreencaps.com which has really clear images. So I'm using the Princeton Velvet Touch brushes which I find are the best for water-based mediums and for the gouache I'm using a combination of the Holbein gouache and the Winsor & Newton designer gouache which I really really enjoy using. And I put them in this little um, sealable palette, which I find is really useful to have all your colours out, but also for them not to be drying really quickly. I love using toned paper for gouache, it really makes the colours pop. And I think this is the soft cover journal from Strathmore, it's the toned and mixed media paper. I'll find the link and I'll put it down below of the exact journal that I'm using in case you're interested. I really rate it. I start off with a really simple sketch and this is just to give me an idea of where everything is when I start painting but it's not a detailed sketch at all. And then we get to my favourite part which is the painting. So my process with gouache is always to use many different layers. My first layer is going to be the thinnest so it doesn't reactivate with the other layers being put on top of it. So here I'm putting down a very dark blue as the shadows that are peeping through the uh, greenery that climbs up the wall. Because the first layer of paint is thin, it dries quickly, which allows me to build on it without having to wait around a long time. I used a dark green and then progressively got lighter with every layer to really add that depth um, that you can see in the reference photo of all the different greenery kind of climbing up the wall. As I keep adding the foliage that goes up the wall, I also touch up on shadows just to make sure that I'm getting that high contrast, um, which adds that depth. The shades of green in this particular scene are very blue toned, so I made sure to mix in Prussian blue into my green to make it a lot more cooler. Then I moved on to the window. I think I got a bit bored of painting the plants so I wanted to change up what I was doing and I started to paint the white of the wood and some of the details of the window itself. What I really love about gouache is it's so forgiving and so you can literally go over it and wait for it to dry and then layer on new paint. Which as you can see is what I did when I made a mistake while I was painting this window. I just went over it and waited for it to dry and then was able to go over it again. Then I went in and started adding all the highlights to the greenery as well as picking out some of those shadows and making them darker in order to add more depth to the piece. My first time using gouache was at the beginning of last year and I really really enjoy this medium so much. I haven't moved away from it since I found it um, which I really want to also try other stuff but I just really love how it works. I love how you can layer it I love how it builds, I love the matte effect that it has, um, it's kind of kind of like watercolour but just has that opaque matte quality to it. I found this part really relaxing actually, I really enjoy painting plants and I love when it starts to gain shape and you can really see that depth and you can see what it is that you're painting and you're kind of past the ugly stage and you're starting to define and add more detail to the painting. Here I'm painting the curtains and I begin to add a lot more detail, pick out the highlights of where the sun is hitting the curtain and then I'm going to add also the pattern to the curtain which is really tiny but those kind of details really bring the whole thing to life which is why I love Studio Ghibli so much because I feel like in such a simple scene like this 
there's so much to look at. My final step is to add the roses to the bushes, which is another tiny detail that brings everything to life. To do the roses, I'm kind of just dabbing my brush, similarly to how I made the leaves to the plants as well. And I'm using a light pink and then a slightly darker pink to add some texture and depth to the rose. That's the first movie scene done and I really like how this turned out. I have very fond memories of painting this. It made me feel very relaxed and I enjoyed it a lot. Okay, so on to our second movie scene, which is from Howl's Moving Castle. This is a popular one. I feel like I've seen it be painted many times before. And I'm not surprised because it's very relaxing to do. I love the colors. I love the process of doing this. So I just love painting Studio Ghibli scenes. I find them very comforting. It's like my comfort zone painting. So I start by laying down a thin layer of the colours of the background, which are the green of the grass, the blue, and then the white of that cloud. As you can see, gouache changes colour when it dries, so light colours become darker and dark colours become lighter. You can really see that in the cloud, um, the white of the paint actually becomes a lot darker. And so the trick I found with painting Studio Ghibli clouds, which have that fluffy quality, is to keep building layers, but also to keep blending. So to achieve that kind of gradient fluffiness, you need to keep blending the paint so that there's no harsh lines. And the great thing about gouache is that you can keep blending because it reactivates with water. I've always found the clouds quite a process, but the two things to remember are to lay down the paint in thin layers, and keep blending out those harsh lines so you get those really soft gradients. If anyone is interested, I can definitely do a tutorial on how to paint these types of clouds. Just let me know in the comments below. I then started painting on the flowers. I used this flat brush and made sure that it was on the drier side. I then dabbed the brush along the page and because it was drier, it meant that the bristles were kind of clumped together and it was making these really cool marks which look like the flowers. For the flowers that are further away, I made smaller marks and then as I got closer, I made larger marks which gives that depth to the painting. I love the colour palette of this painting, uh, the combination of the pastel colours brings me so much joy. As I was finishing, I touched up some of the mountain and made sure that the shadows were dark enough and also touched up some of the water, added some of those highlights to tie everything in together. And here is my final piece. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint those two movie scenes and I'll be back with more painting process videos soon. Thanks for watching!